But holy smokes, talk about market of volatility. This is an insane, insane time to be involved in markets. First, we're going to talk about what's going on this morning with Israel and uh, some Fed speak and other information. But first, I want to give you a quick reminder of how crazy just the last three months have been. Listen to some of this. The S&P 500 is poised to close out the quarter 5% at fresh all-time highs while the VIX is 30% over a 17 handle. That would be the first time that has ever happened where the market rallied 5% at a time when volatility is also up. So in English, things are going like this and things are ending up high. It, this is unprecedented. Listen to this, the AI winners basket per UBS in the quarter literally went down 22% in one quarter, up 18%, down 13%, then up 16%, all within the span of just one quarter. We also had the largest decline in two-year treasury yields since September of 2001. Yes, recessionary times. You had one of the largest defensive moves with utilities and REITs up over 15%. You've also had a gold ripping 14%, best quarter since 2016, and the largest in uh, uninversion of the yield curve since the first quarter of 2009. These are some crazy moves that we're seeing here. And the reality is we had two assassination attempts last quarter. We had a president who quit his reelection campaign. Now you've got insanity happening with the port strike, which just started taking place yesterday. We have a, I, I won't rehash all of the things that we already talked about on the port strike because I have a full video on the port strike. Just look at it on my channel. So you already know some of the basics that are going on. But the strike began at midnight. You know, the dock workers are demanding, obviously, more pay. Uh, I think they want about 77% more pay. Uh, employers have offered about 50% more pay. When you hear the names, by the way, it gets confusing. The International Longshoremen Association, that's the union. Those are the workers. The ILA and the United States Maritime Alliance, that's the employer. Uh, so I know that gets a little confusing, folks. But I mean... The the type of rhetoric that you're getting out of the union boss is, I mean, if you're in a union, exactly what you want your union boss to say. But if you're an economist who's like, oh, my gosh, we don't need more stuff to drive us into a recession. This would be exactly what you don't want a union boss to say. I'll pull up the video of this union boss. If you haven't seen it yet, it's absolute like this is the kind of stuff like if somebody wanted to make a movie uh, that was just called volatility, like these are all the things that would happen, <laughs> you know, short of another pandemic, like. Iran threatening to launch a ballistic missile at, at Israel, uh, and that is apparently now imminent with a missile that could arrive in the span of 12 minutes? Are you freaking kidding me? It's crazy. But listen to this union boss for a moment. This is, this is pretty wild, too. Uh, volume's right. Today's world, it's changing into the future. They're not making millions no more. They're making billions, and they're spending it fast as they make it. I want a piece of that for my men. Because when they made their most money was during COVID. When my men had to go to work on those piers every single day, when everybody stayed home and went to work. Not my men. They died out there with the virus. We all got sick with the virus. We kept them going. From Canada to Maine to Texas, Great Lakes, Puerto Rico, now the Bahamas, everybody went to work during COVID. Nobody stayed home. Well, I want to be compensated for that. I'm not asking for the world. They know what I want. They know what I want. And if they don't, no, well, then I have to go into the street and we have to fight for what we rightfully deserve. These people today don't know what a strike is. Right. When my men hit the streets from Maine to Texas, every single port will lock down. You know what's going to happen? I'll tell you. First week, be all over the news every night, boom, boom. Second week, guys who sell cars can't sell cars because the cars ain't coming in off the ships. They get laid off. Third week, malls start closing down. They can't get the goods from China. They can't sell clothes. They can't do this. Everything in the United States comes on a ship. They go out of business. Construction workers, 
get laid off because the materials aren't coming in. The steel's not coming in. The lumber's not coming in. They lose their job. Everybody's hating the longshoremen now because now they realize how important our jobs are. Now I have the president screaming at me. I'm putting a Taft Hartley on you. Go ahead. Taft Hartley. Uh, quickly, Taft Hartley would be a way of forcing striking workers back to work when it's for economic and national security concerns. This, by the way, what he's about to say is wild because he basically says, F your Taft Hartley act, we'll just sandbag. Crazy. Listen to it and then we'll talk implications. Means I have to go back to work for 90 days. That's a cooling off period. Do you think when I go back for 90 days, those men are going to go to work on that pier? It's going to cost the money, the company's money to pay their salaries. Well, they go went from 30 moves an hour, maybe to eight. They're going to be like this. Who's going to win here in the long run? You're better off sitting down and let's get a contract and let's move on with this world. And in today's world, I'll cripple you. I will cripple you. And you have no idea what that means. Nobody. Yikes. So, I mean, obviously a really stern warning here from a union boss. Again, if you're a union member, this is exactly what you would want. You you look at this person, you go, yes, tell it like it is. Obviously, employers are like, oh my gosh, profit margins have gotten squeezed. Uh, the economy slowed down. Things have gotten tighter. We need automation. You know, it's the same kind of uh, fights that we've seen in the 50s against the innovation of the container. We, we've, we've seen anti-innovation uh, fights uh, before from, from manual laborers, and, and I get it. Uh, but the point is, this now comes at the same time as Israeli forces are conducting operations in Lebanon. They've issued now evacuation warnings to 26 different villages in uh, southern Lebanon. Uh, Israel is conducting uh, strikes within the region, specifically uh, uh, trying to avoid cities, so they say. But, you know, you've got Israelis, quite frankly, a lot of videos of Israelis leveling areas and towns uh, inside of uh, of the West Bank and people are like, bro, this is this is excessive here. And so uh, however it's portrayed doesn't matter. One side's always going to view Israel as excessive and Israel's always going to view it as we're just responding. But the point is, Iran's now potentially suggesting, hey, it's time to go intercontinental ballistic missile or maybe even short range ballistic missile uh, a, a war here, which then begs the question, if Israel gets hit really hard. Oh, yeah. Listen to this. Israel, uh, Israel military spokesman says potential missile attack from Iran expected to be widespread. This isn't like one missile and then they shoot it down. Like, this is expected to be, in my opinion, a volley of short-range ballistic missiles. And if Israel gets pummeled to where, like, you know, the system's not perfect, it doesn't actually take these, uh, take all of these uh, short-range ballistic missiles down, in that case, unfortunately, there is a risk that Israel turns around and says, F it. Bring out the strategic nukes against Iran. Which the Economist just this morning wrote a piece about how after the decapitation of Hezbollah, Iran could be racing for a nuclear bomb. Uh, well, that's not great. Uh, so now you have this potential uh, risk that you end up having a World War III style nuclear warfare in the Middle East. Uh, and then you potentially have Russia and China getting involved. This is how you get to World War. Uh, potentially trying to create peace, but then they have to take sides in order to, to potentially try to uh, contribute to uh, resolving issues. Issues. Then you potentially also lead to Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and Turkey responding, or at least building their nuclear arsenal. Now what you end up having is nuclear proliferation rather than non-proliferation. Okay, then we're not going to care anymore about iPhone 16s not selling as well. We're not going to care uh, so much uh, about uh, bond traders buying the dip in bonds after the contraction in factory jobs. We're just not going to care about these things anymore. Uh, we're going to be in a position where we look at this and go, oh, hot Tua, this ain't good. Uh, now, all of a sudden, when we look at the economic calendar, we go, yeah, sure, we had a JOLTS report that was decent this morning. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it came in hotter than expected with an upward revision. Uh, but what do you, what do you end up with? You end up with, uh, ISM manufacturing employment that came in way lower than expected. Uh, uh, let me see here. Okay. Yeah, there we go. 
Uh, okay, so, um, yeah, anyway, so you have this, ah, uh, this is just, it's just crazy, you know, this, the data this morning is just so wild, quite frankly, it's so wild because you're in an environment where the data is just so unclear because we don't know what to believe. Some data is going to be revised. Other data is not going to be revised. Some data is good. Some data is bad. We don't know what to believe. All we know is we have more uncertainty. So ISM employment goes down, but Jolt says there are more openings, but at the same time, construction spending is coming down. Like, this is just, this is a mess of freaking data. At the same time as you have this Israel crisis and you have a strike going on, a worker strike, this is crazy. This is, like, if you were going to write a story about how recessions are started, this is it. The worker strike goes through the election would be very bad. Now, it's possible the worker strike goes through the election because the Biden administration might not want to intervene until the election because they don't want to come across as anti-union. But if they don't intervene, then they flirt with the idea of potentially creating a recession, which isn't good. Of course, they could say, oh, well, hey, Fed, you mop it up. That's not good. So the longer this strike goes on, the worse. I don't actually think it'll be consumer price inflationary. Uh, I actually think that consumer prices will stay pretty stable, mostly because companies don't have pricing power anymore. There's a limit to how much you can raise prices. People just are not willing to pay prices uh, that are high anymore. Good news, by the way, though, we do have a coupon code, hashtag jobs, that expires this Friday. You can see my trades in this environment, our long thesis uh, that we did this morning in the course member live stream, and you get lifetime access to that. So you pay once, it's like 500 bucks, it's not a lot. You pay once, you're in forever. You're in the community, you get to chat with everybody in the community, you get to be a part of the community, you get to listen to the fundamental analysis that I do on a daily basis, you name it. So the data today was just hyper unclear, along with all the other uncertainties we've seen is why we're seeing such a movement. Uh, a lot of people are ironically fleeing to, well, maybe unironically, I should say, uh, unironically fleeing to uh, gold, selling Bitcoin, going to gold and uh, going to bonds. You know, bonds up quite a bit, bond yields down, which uh, now we're in an environment where you actually have uh, you know, evidence that shows, hey, wow, okay, having hedges is a good thing for a portfolio on down days like this. People always think like, oh, if you have a hedge, that means uh, you just, you own, you're only a shorter. No, you could also have calls that are hedges. But anyway, uh, like a call on gold or a call on something else, like some of the, the hedges that I like. But uh, uh, a lot of uncertainty here. We'll see what happens with Israel and Iran. I will keep you up to date. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to pull something off, honestly during the debate, the VP debate. That might be the time to do it. It's kind of dirty, but it might happen. As they usually like to strike at night too, time in Israel. Right now it's 7.03 p.m. in Israel. Like it's just starting to get dark. The window opens at night. Uh, then uh, data this morning, hyper confusing. The oddities that we're seeing in the environment in terms of like how volatile things are, very high. But then you also have to balance this with, hey, recognize that uh, there's there's so much uncertainty that sometimes this these levels of uncertainty can actually breed opportunity. If we don't end up having a recession, maybe these are all just buy the dips. I mean, look, Nvidia is down three and a half percent. You know, is it a buy the dip? I don't know. Are we gonna have a recession or not? Samsung's apparently laying off thousands of workers, and now there are talks about you know potentially a certain GB two hundred or whatever. Uh, server chip getting delayed by Nvidia. I, I don't know that that really actually matters or means anything. But uh, it's a wild time. And I encourage you to be careful out there. Protect yourself. Protect your portfolio. Uh, we do expect to get Tesla deliveries tomorrow morning. Then we'll have the RoboTaxi event. I'll be covering the uh, debate tonight live. So come join the channel. And then as far as other economic news, tomorrow morning at 5.15, so a little earlier, we will get the ADP employment change. So come for that as well, followed by obviously a jobs report on Friday, unemployment claims and all that on Thursday. Thank you so very much for being here, folks. Buckle up because this is wild. We could be on the brink of a soft landing, an election being over, and a lot of uncertainties going away and no wars, or we could be on the brink of World War III and a recession. That's pretty extreme.
why not advertise these things that you told us here? I feel like nobody else knows about this. We'll, we'll try a little advertising and see how it goes. Congratulations, man. You have done so much. People love you. People look up to you. Kevin Pafrath there, financial analyst and YouTuber. Meet Kevin. Always great to get your take. Even though I'm a licensed financial advisor, licensed real estate broker, and becoming a stockbroker, this video is not personalized advice for you. It is not tax, legal, or otherwise personalized advice tailored to you. This video provides generalized perspective, information, and commentary. Any third-party content I show shall not be deemed endorsed by me. This video is not and shall never be deemed reasonably sufficient information for the purposes of evaluating a security or investment decision. Any links or promoted products are either paid affiliations or products or services we may benefit from. I also personally operate an actively managed ETF. I may personally hold or otherwise hold long or short positions in various securities, potentially including those mentioned in this video. However, I have no relationship to any issuer other than Hausack, nor am I presently acting as a market maker. Make sure if you're considering investing in Hausack to always read the PPM at Hausack.com.